If you're in the HomeKit camp, you've probably been eyeing the Vocalink Pure Flow Air Purifier and wondering if it's worth your dollars. In this video, I'm gonna try to help you answer that question. Hey guys, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, the channel where we bring you new smart home content every single week, looking at Apple HomeKit, a little bit of Amazon, Google, Home Assistant, whatever else I find interesting. If you find that interesting, do me a favor, consider subscribing below, ring that bell so you get notified when there are new videos. This is the first air purifier that I've personally been able to get my hands on that has full support for Apple HomeKit. Now we've looked at the Brit in the past, which had some air purifier uh, capabilities, but this is a whole different animal here. This Vocalink air purifier is a uh, full HEPA air purifier, complete with a temperature sensor, a uh, humidity sensor, PM 2.5, particulate matter 2.5 sensor, all of that included. So it is really a great product. So for those of you wondering, is it worth your money? Uh, the first answer to that question for me is gonna be yes. This is definitely in the mid-range of, of the mid-range air purifiers. So you're not talking about the $100 air purifiers that you're gonna throw in your house uh, in, in, in a bedroom somewhere. And we're also not talking about the uh, very expensive $1,000, $1,500 plus. So from a pricing standpoint, um, I picked this up from Best Buy. You can order them on Amazon. And in Canada, they're showing at about $399, which is uh, not a bad deal. Again, it's right in that mid-price range. Purifier does require two filters, which is gonna be cost you about $80 a piece. At least that's what the earliest indications show. We'll see when those actually start to become more available. And again, for me, that's gonna be anywhere from six months to a year from now. So for those of you wondering, why am I gonna use this? This is a HEPA purifier, and it's gonna be really good at dealing with dust, pollen, um, dander, pet dander, those kinds of things, right? This has a particulate matter 2.5 sensor, which means it's going to detect all of those things as well. One of the things that I'm not so happy about with it is it does not have a VOC sensor included. So for those of you wondering what is exactly is a VOC, essentially this is a, uh, a substance that's gaseous at, at uh, room temperature, right? So things like methane, formaldehyde, benzene, um, all of these kinds of things can be in the air we breathe. And they are natural byproducts of wood breaking down, uh, they're natural biological byproducts of Taco Tuesday, all of those kinds of things, right? So um, being able to get that out of the air, you know, those are the smells that we start to smell in the house sometimes. Uh, this is gonna help with that, although it won't detect it. So although the lack of VOC sensor is kind of a con of the product, that's the beautiful thing about Apple HomeKit, is you can pair this easily with a Kytera Laser Egg VOC, or an Eve Room, or any other air purifier or air quality uh, sensor that does detect VOCs, and you can use that to trigger the Vocalink Pure Flow to be able to still clean the air when things start to get a little smelly or you start to have uh, any of these gases. So a couple things that I wanted to look at specifically before we get into the detailed review are uh, where would you use this? So in my case, I have this in the master bedroom. And one of the things that I really like about this is the night mode. Uh, Vocalink has paid some special attention to make sure that A, they get the sound right. So even at night, it's operating at a low 30 decibels, which means it's basically going to just blend into whatever other sounds are happening in your house at that point in time. It will not disturb you or should not disturb most people. If you're very sensitive, you might hear a little bit of the fan going, but most people like me, for instance, I don't even notice it. The other thing that's really nice is the addition of the night mode feature. So the night mode feature is uh, included, but uh, again, something that I'm really hoping is gonna get covered in software soon, you have to log into your phone and push a button, or you have to log uh, or, or, or physically touch the device and push the night mode button physically on the Vocalink PureFlow purifier to get it into night mode. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to have it automatically happen at certain times. That's why we're, we do the smart home thing. Our houses should look after us. I'm a big believer in that. So at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how I use the Home 4 Plus app to create an automation to do just that. So again, there are some, um, some rough edges around this product, definitely. The lack of the VOC sensor is one. Uh, the automations but there is nothing that you can't deal with, with a little ingenuity, a little time setting up some automations, and uh, just pairing them with your other HomeKit devices that you probably already have. 
The Vocalink VAP-1 or Pure Flow Air Purifier is one of the first Apple HomeKit purifiers commonly available. We've seen other purifiers listed as, as certified before, but I've never been able to get my hands on one. So really excited about this particular review. It is a Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz, uh, clean air delivery rate of 295 cubic feet uh, per minute. 645 square foot room is about what this is going to be able to um, to deal with. So this is going to be able to deal with bedrooms easily and even some larger size family rooms potentially. It is a HEPA purifier, 99.7% efficient. We'll look more at the filters in a little bit. It is 22 by 11 and a half and 11 and a half inches, um, 18.3 pounds. 120 uh, volts AC at 55 watts at the max, although I haven't been able to get it up to 55 watts in some of my testing. A 7.2 foot power cable, so you can put it just about anywhere. And the noise level is all the way down to 30 decibels, so you can comfortably put this into your bedroom at night and not worry too much about the noise unless you are particularly sensitive. From a sensor standpoint, you've got temperature, humidity, as well as a PM 2.5, although I will call out the fact that we are missing a volatile organic compound or VOC sensor, which I really think would have been a nice addition. The Vocalink PureFlow has two filters in it, which is a HEPA three-stage filtration system with a pre-filter, a HEPA filter, as well as a activated carbon filter in a hive pattern, which is shown in the video. So these have been reported at about $80 each, which may sound like a lot. You're going to have to replace them at least once a year. Could be less than that, depending on, on how dirty your air is in your environment. Uh, but in my opinion, for uh, filters in this range of purifier, this is actually normal. The fact that we're not having to buy our carbon activated carbon filters separate as well. You know, these things do start to add up when we're really start to get into this stage of purifier. So I'm not too actually upset about that. Let's look at the unboxing. So as you can see, this is a large device. This is not a small, tiny little um, device. You might even need help carrying it. It is 18 pounds of, of the purifier itself, and it's probably closer to 25 with all the packaging and everything involved. Uh, very clear, nice. Um, I, I like the box. I like the way that they have uh, really taken all the pictures on it. It's clear what's on the inside. And as well, it's also clear that you get access to Apple HomeKit, Amazon, and Google Home. All of those are supported with the Vocalink VAP1 purifier. So we're going to fast forward through the unboxing here. Everything is well packed on the inside of it and everything is uh, was included exactly as I would have expected. The screen protector is on there. Uh, it's very clear that you have to go in and take out uh, the protectors from the purifiers. So as you can see here, it is definitely, you know, they, they gave us the right dimensions. The instructions are all included. Very clear instructions. I've always admired uh, Vocalink as a brand for this by going kind of over above some other brands to really make sure that we understand how to use the products. On the side of it, the uh, the filter here is right in behind and it is held on by just a couple of magnets so it's fairly easy to get in and out of, which means that it's also going to be fairly easy to replace these when that time comes, which is not always the case with all air purifiers that I've looked at in the past. So we're just going to take the plastic off of these um, and, and you can get kind of a better idea of what the filter looks like here. So uh, as I said, this is a three-stage filter. Uh, so you have the pre-filter, you have the uh, HEPA on the inside, and you have the activated carbon in, on the back of it there with the honeycomb pattern. So this does look like it's going to be uh, fairly well. It's going to work as a filter. And to be honest, um, I'm, I've so far already seen a difference in the master bedroom, which is where I'm, I've actually got this running. So I've already prepped this with an NFC tag to make it a little easier to add this uh, again if I ever need to reset it. You can see the flashing home on the screen is letting me know that there is a Wi-Fi. Uh, it's searching for Wi-Fi. And all I have to do is tap the NFC tag and it's going to add automatically. So I'll put a link to that video if you haven't seen that already. Definitely makes your life a little easier. And as we can see here, we've got the PureFlow Smart Air Purifier, Air Quality Sensor, Humidity Sensor, and Temperature Sensor. All of that is available. So I'm going to temporarily put this into the uh, my office, which is where I do all my testing. And then we're going to take a closer look to see exactly how this works. So going over to the My Office room and looking at the Pure Flow Smart Air Purifier here, you can see everything is in tile. I'm on iOS 13 still. Um, I've got 
excellent air quality. So this is only going to be dependent on the 2.5, the particulate matter 2.5 sensor. So if you have a VOC sensor from uh, Kaitera, for instance, or, or like the EVE room, they may disagree. And it's important to understand that we're actually detecting two different things here. Particulate matter 2.5, as I said previously, is more dust. VOCs are things like off-gassing from um, particulate board or paint or um, even uh, Taco Tuesday from your kids. Any of those things will cause a VOC to trigger but not necessarily the PM2.5. So when we go into the Vocal Link app, uh, first thing that I love to see here is that there is a update available. So we're gonna go through that, do a little movie magic to skip through. And this did take about a minute, a uh, minute and a half, something like that. So it was a, uh, a larger update, which is good, right? We like updates, we like bug fixes, but it was, um, the firmware update was successful on the first try. So again, we've got the ability to do the time zone set here. So this is going to sync your, um, your vocal link air purifier to the time zone of your phone, which is important because you can add a schedule specific to the vocal link air purifier. And this is going to become uh, a little bit handier if you're using Google or Amazon. Again, we can also go into the, uh, to, into the app and the vocal link app and link this to the vocal link cloud, which you can see instantly gives me ability to now control it within the Amazon ecosystem or the Google ecosystem. Again, Google, Amazon, cloud linked, uh, Apple HomeKit, local controls. So getting into the app a little deeper here, uh, we're able to control this in the Apple Home app as well as the Vocal Link app. Either one is going to work for us. Uh, we've got the slider ability so we can turn it on. Uh, one, some things that I'm not happy about the Apple Home app is, for instance, the night mode is not exposed into here. So the uh, ability to turn off that front screen and make sure that it's not glowing at night when you're trying to sleep. Um, as well, there's the auto mode is um, not, it's not working the way I would like it to, but again, that's why we have things like the vocal link app so if i switch over to that the vocal link app you can see here i get some additional controls i get my my night mode controls i get my auto controls i have my child lock so i can prevent uh, my kids from coming and messing with the air purifier if that is what is important to me so i have all those capabilities here built into the vocal link app um, the brightness all of that uh, i can control it all which is awesome but unfortunately, I can't schedule the night mode to go off at a certain point in the Vocal Link app. So for me, I don't want to have to log into the phone. I don't want to have to touch a button. Thankfully, we have the um, the Home 4 Plus app available, which is one of the best apps out there for doing uh, some of the more complex and advanced automations. So going over into the settings and looking at the accessory here in the PureFlow Smart Air Purifier specifically, you know, we can look at, at things like the filter maintenance. We can look at the RSSI report, uh, temperature, change the display. So anything that's exposed internally into the HomeKit database can be seen by this particular app. And one of those things is listed here is the first custom attribute. So after doing a little digging and playing around with it, custom attribute, two values, zero or one. And that zero and one corresponds to the day mode, so the screen will be on, or night mode with the screen off. So I've got a scene here now that I've created called Pure Flow Night Mode, where really you can't really see the custom one is like, which custom is that? So I'm gonna show you how we went in and found that. So I'm gonna again, go choose the accessory. I'm going to scroll down to the uh, Pure Flow Air Purifier down here at the bottom. I'm gonna tap on that, go in, find the custom. And again, there was three customs there. There was one, two, and three. So I'm going to grab the top one, which was the value of zero and one. I actually don't know what the other two are for yet. So if you guys figure that out, please do me a favor, post in the video details below because I would love to know. We're going to set this to one, which is going to say uh, night mode. And there we go. Now, when I run this particular scene, it's going to be able to run the night mode. And as well, I'm also going to do the opposite and say, create this for a, uh, a day mode so that I can automatically create some time of day based automations for um, for either the day mode or uh, or night mode to kick off at say you know 7 a.m 8 a.m or uh, to turn the screen off so we can all go to bed at around 10 p.m so what do i think overall again i kind of laid this out at the beginning of the video i'm overall i'm happy with the product i would recommend this uh there are a couple of rough edges around the software which i think are going to get solved fairly quickly we've got feedback into vocal link already on those um, as well, the, the lack of the VOC sensor, again, uh, would it have been nice to have it in there? Absolutely. Is it a huge issue with the product? 
Absolutely not. You can pair this with an Eve room, you can pair it with a Kytera laser egg and create those automations to deal with that as it comes up as any of those uh, funky smells that start to happen in your house. What do you guys think? Is this something you would consider in your house, uh, are you have you been looking at picking one up or just waiting on more information? If I've missed anything, if I haven't answered questions, or you just want more on something that I've touched on, do me a favor, ask questions in the comments section below, and I will be happy to get those to you as soon as I can. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, likes, shares, always appreciated. And I also want to do a shout out to uh, Modern Day Tech, to John over at HomeKit Authority, to Shane Creates, to Dustin over at My HomeKit Home, all those guys, Andrew at Apple Insider. I'm going to put a link up here to a video that we did recently on WWDC. There's a couple videos. Definitely check those out and you can kind of see what we're expecting to see. So do me a favor. Go check that out. Support those other creators. Subscribe to them. They're awesome guys. Produce great content. We'll see you guys soon.